Hi everyone, it's Sarah with House Copper. Today I'm just going to do a very quick explanation of how to know whether your copper cookware needs uh, refurbishment, whether it doesn't, how to tell um, the what if it was ever even tinned, and some of just kind of the basic FYI's about uh, copper repair. First and foremost, I have this piece today. Um, it is a nice old probably French or Italian make, it's not marked, um, but it's very thick, it's easily three mil mils, um, and uh, I don't think it was ever lined. Part of the way you can tell is if there's any leftover tin in the rivet cracks here, or right inside the radius, right down there, which as you can see, it's very clean. Those are the places where tin is most likely to not wear out. Um, they just kind of get stuck there and because it's bonded molecularly um, that's where it, it receives the least amount of wear of tear also usually up around the rim. So the fact that this one doesn't have any of those makes me think it was never tinned. I have been asked to tin it now which is totally fine once I clean it up a little bit and um, uh, that's, that's uh, how you can tell whether or not something was tinned. Also this one has a really good example of vertigra right here. Um, vertigra is not rust, but it is uh, poisonous. Probably don't want to eat off of it. So you can remove it, whether with bead blasting or sanding. Um, you know, be cognizant of the fact that the copper will etch with any of those removal techniques. You can usually buff that out with a buffing wheel when the when you're polishing it after any tinning or repair work. But vertigra does etch the tin, or I'm sorry, vertigra etches the copper as well. So even if you remove it and you buff and polish it, you will be able to still see where the vertigra sat on the copper. It just kind of naturally pits it, but you know, then you have a piece with some character. That's that one. <laughs> this piece, very old. Um, uh, hand stamped or at least machine stamped um, it's 11 inches and the tin is pretty much worn off and this whole thing is mostly vertigrade or the tin is so old it's not doing its job anymore and uh, I've been asked to fix it and also repair the top which can be done using uh, old tinner stakes and um, and anvils and things like that but uh, yeah, this one also, you you know, when the tin is this dark, it's, um, it's not only dirty and oxidized, but it's not going to be non-stick anymore, which is what tin is. So if it's really, really dark and the vertigra is showing, which means the copper is peaking through in extreme amounts, uh, anything over like 30% of your copper um, showing is a good time and it's kind of a good rule of thumb to say time to get it fixed up. Um, just you know in terms of copper leaching it's a nice safety safety number 30 percent showing this one is very similar to the first one i showed you but this one i would say does not need to be fixed um it's a really great job of of tinning and um i'm actually going to talk to the owner about just maybe I can clean up off all the grease and things like that, but you can see that it doesn't need fixing. There's like no copper showing. So if you find a good heavy piece like this and the copper has this shine yet, you're good. Don't send it to me. I don't want it. It'll be a pain in the butt to take off all that tin. It's in good shape and it should actually be pretty nonstick at that point yet. You, you, you know, with um, wood or silicone utensils, it should last for many, many years in that shape yet. Um, this one is old. So there's a couple ways I know this. One, the handle and these giant rivets. Good sign. It's old. Secondly, again, look at the bottom. And if you watch some of my other videos, you can see the evidence of the, um, the cramp seam, or some people say dovetailing, but it's in coppersmithing. And tinsmithing, that is a cramp seam. Um, and you can see it going up here. So you know, once again, that this piece was built in the flat before the stamping companies in the 
40s, 50s, and 60s started to really uh, amp up their production. So this was handmade in uh, out of flat copper uh, cut and formed, fitted, heated, hammered together. Um, this one actually has even more issues. See this vertigra here all along the base? It's cracked. It's leaking. This is a leaky pot. So in order to fix it, I'm going to have to completely clean off all of this vertigra and have to go in. I'm going to have to pull, I don't know if you can see it, but there's like extra solder right down here where somebody tried to repair that leak with a chunk of tin that never works. Um, it will eventually just continue to leak. Um, this also here is a huge crack that went all the way through, which you can see in the middle right here, which will also need to be fixed by completely cleaning the metal and then using a settling torch and brazing sticks and brazing flux compound in order to repair this properly. Um, some, something else, and also, even though, you know, old pots, it's really nice if you can get them thick, like the ones I showed you earlier, because they they've been stamped, um, deep formed that way, but really old copper, vintage copper, is not going to be that thick because they couldn't make it that thick. They were making it by hand in the flat. So the sheets had to be thin enough for them to cut. They had to be thin enough for them to form over the stakes. Um, so extremely vintage copper, pre-1840s, is actually a thinner copper. So if you're looking for really good old pieces, you really aren't looking for the super thick stuff. I mean, and you know, they work. It's fine. They'll work wonderfully. Um, I don't know if I'm going to be able to show you this. Let's see if I can. Maybe. It doesn't sit true. See how tippy it is? It's like, I can't, it just, it doesn't. It's impossible to sit true. So that means in order to re properly repair it, not only will I have to fix all of these leaks, but I'm going to have to heat it and put a form underneath it to hold it and heat it. And the heating is is going to soften the copper or temper the copper. Um, and uh, um, excuse me for a second. My toddler just ran. And that is called being a coppersmith and a mom. Uh, okay, so sorry, not tempering, um, uh, annealing the copper. <laughs> Thank you, three-year-old. Um, so when it's all soft like that, you can and you have support underneath, you can actually hammer this slowly, working on the outside and then kind of working your way in and then back out again and over and over and over again. You can flatten this. Now, you have to be really careful because this copper is probably at least 200 years old. It will crack if you do if you hammer it too hard and too fast and you get it too hot or not hot enough. So it's this super delicate process that is kind of annoyingly um, painstaking. And um, But you can actually get this to lay true and sit flat on the stove again with that process. Um, and then of course you'll remove your vertigra, you'll remove this decrepit old oxidized tin um, because it is task saving in this shape and um, you will be able to um, uh, clean it. Something else also to mention, do you see how this isn't round? Some copper is, uh, is when you think it's in the flat, so it's going to be really, really um, malleable. This is not. Usually when it's in this shape and in this thinness, I can actually press it because this has been heated so many times over the stove over this, the centuries, decades, it has um, become heat treated, which I can fix by reheating it hot enough so that I can I can actually take some of this um, these flattened edges out and I can fix the dents in here, but um, it's still really delicate work. But you can you can still reform this um, and by softening the copper. But if you didn't and you left it like this, it's actually a really solid piece because of um, of the heat it's endured over the years. It's like work hardened. So. Um, let me know any questions. Hopefully I answered a couple of questions and um, I'm always here for comments, um, whatever. I mean, I haven't been doing this for forever, clearly. Um, I, you know, only a handful of years. I still have an apprenticeship with a master tinsmith, um, but he and I are both kind of learning some of this copper work together. And um, it's been a really awesome process and I appreciate all of the uh, 
great comments and support that have been manifesting on here. So keep in touch and I uh, thanks for watching.